Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Today, I'm hanging out with some friends here in Texas before moving on to uh, Lake uh, Eufaula in Oklahoma. Uh, I love staying here in Texas and, and visiting our friends here. And uh, it's a beautiful day, man. And you know, I wanted to do this video on a topic that a lot of you guys have requested, guys and gals have requested um, me to, to talk about, and that is about shell beds. Um, you know, what are shell beds, how to find them, and why do they attract so many fish? Um, you know, we just recently had the tournament on Lake Wheeler or Wheeler Lake in Alabama uh, on the Tennessee River, and shell bed was one of those hot terms. Everybody was talking about fishing shell beds, and, uh, and you know, for years, it always seemed like shell beds to me were kind of that unicorn, you know, that, that mythical beast that, that everybody was trying to, to look for. And, you know, especially living down in Florida, I was like, man, uh, you know, everybody's talking about fishing these shell beds and I, I really didn't quite understand exactly what they were talking about. I knew that there were hard spots. I knew somewhat how to, to, to find them. But to me, until I started to realize what was going on, like where those shell beds would uh, would, would uh, be located, uh, until I started to figure out, you know, uh, the d dynamics of these things, I was, you know, it was really hard for me to, to figure it all out. So anyways, I wanted to, to share with you guys kind of what I've learned over the years about shell beds. Um, and the very first thing is that I need to mention here is that I think that the term shell bed is overused and it's also misused too because shell beds are not the reason why a spot is good, uh, in my opinion. Um, the shell bed, the shell, the actual mollusks or those, those organisms that are on those areas are filter feeders. They are, they are there to, um, you know, filter out the phytoplankton and the zooplankton in the water. And so, um, they're there for a specific reason and the bass are there not because the shell is there. The shell, those mollusks, those, those, uh, little, little organisms are, are there for, the same reason that the bass are there because that area has a condensed amount of current, whether it's wind blown or, or uh, you know, actual um, natural current oriented, those, those animals are there because of the same reason, because it's the, the system is constantly flushing, you know, new life through the area. For bass, it's shad and other types of, of bait fish. For the uh, shell, it's the, the phytoplankton, the zooplankton they're filtering through the water and so once you understand that that starts helping you figure out what areas are going to be key um, to find shell beds but again it's i don't think it's the actual shell those mollusks that are there that are causing the bass to be there it has everything to do with just the the location and why would a a uh, you know one of these mollusks, these little clams, mussels? Why would they choose one area over another? Okay, the answer is um, they're looking for high spots. They're looking for areas where the current is condensing and it's washing all kinds of nutrients. And and uh, for the bass, again, it's like shad and things like that. They're looking for those high spot areas. That is the biggest key. And what I've learned over the years is when somebody's talking about a shell bed, yes, there's shell there. Um, you know, they may be dragging a Carolina rig through it or a crankbait and getting, you know, shells back when they come in. And it, but again, it's not that the bass are attracted to the shells. They're attracted to the area because it's a little bit different. And what I started to find on every single fishery, even when I go down to Florida, is when I find a spot that is has a higher little maybe it's a little bit of a a hump or you know it may just be a few inches uh, of a a raised area those type of areas assuming you've got a flat surface and then all of a sudden you've got this two inch little rise you know maybe the size of a car or something like that that's where the shell are going to be. That's where those mollusks are going to congregate, creating a shell bed, creating that hard bottom situation. 
And it's also because the water, the current, the natural current either, you know, created because it has a natural current or it has windblown current, that current is going to constantly keep that, that bottom clean. And those filter feeders are going to be there because of that reason. So high spots are the key. So when people are talking about shell beds, they're talking about higher spots than the surrounding area. So for instance, let's look at, um, you know, a uh, Wheeler Lake. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and turn on my Navionics app here. You know, we, we do a lot of map study uh, on this channel. And, you know, if you haven't got the Navionics app for your iPad or your, uh, your iPhone, you've gotta get it, you've gotta check it out. It's the Navionics boating app, it is the deal. Um, but essentially what we're gonna do here is we're gonna look at the Decatur Flats. That is the area of the lake that everybody was talking about in the tournament. Um, there's so many guys did well there. Uh, if you can get on a spot, you probably did pretty well if you had your timing somewhat right. So um, on the map here, you know, you can actually look on Google Earth and find a lot more of these areas, but it, you know, just looking at the area. Decatur Flats is this entire area, you know, pretty much all the way to the power lines, all this area over here. But the primary, uh, you know, hot spots on Decatur Flats are the uh, main river bars here, okay? So any of these high spots, like right here, you can see a high spot. Um, this is where the contours are just slightly higher than the surrounding area. You go from six foot, to the you know the the closest deeper water is seven feet of course you got the main river channel too but it's just these little high spots uh, again if you go on uh, on google earth you look at satellite imagery you can actually see the high spots during low water conditions um, but uh, essentially you know that's what you know, like this is a perfect example right here this right here is a is a high spot i guarantee each of these high spots on this this in this area on the flats are comprised mostly of shell so they're hard bottom and the bass are there uh be, you know hard bottom is definitely something that the bass are attracted to 100 percent. but primarily it's all about uh areas where where you know the nutrients and the bait fish are condensing and the current is washing those uh that food source to the fish and that's why the shells there that's why the bass are there that's why all these different species are there and so when you find areas that have a slightly um raised um you know topography to it uh, it could be the size of a, a car. It could be the size of a, you know, a football field. If it's, re if it's relatively, uh, you know, higher than the rest of the, the topography surrounding it, it's going to have shell on it. Um, I mean, the majority of the time, that is going to be the case. So the high spots are really the key when it comes to shell beds. So anyways, guys, just wanted to kind of talk uh, talk through that a little bit because I think the term shell beds are, are used so much that we tend to focus more on those, those uh, you know, that those mollusks, those those little animals. Um, and, and people tend to think that, that's why the bass are there is because those shell are there. No, the shell and the bass are there for the same exact reason. And uh, so, you know, once you start figuring that out, it kind of demystifies it and you can start focusing in on the correct areas and start finding shell beds of your own. So go out there, get the Navionics app or get Navionics cards for your graph go out there find those high spots uh, that are uh, that are relative to the surrounding areas and you're going to find shell beds that's how they do it another great way to be able to find them is if you don't have really good topography on a certain lake um you know there's not a whole lot of of really um specific contour changes that you can see on a map go out there idle around and look for those bright returns on your side imaging that is going to help you find those higher spots um, you know because when you have ascending contours you start getting a stronger return and those ascending contours are usually uh, also paired with 
hard bottom just from the nature of things just like we talked about but anyways guys i hope this helps if you have any more questions drop a comment below again make sure you check out navionics for both your graphs and your your mobile device and i'm gonna see you guys out on the water make sure you trust the process take care